Over the years, many fan favorite roller coasters have been torn down. Some get in the way of progress, while others can't be repaired anymore. Recently, I asked my viewers to vote on the most sorely missed defunct roller coasters out there. And in honor of these fallen attractions, let's take a look at the top 10. Number 10. Thunder Road at North Carolina's Carowinds. Opened in 1976, closed in 2015. For almost half a century, Carowinds has been known as the thrill capital of the Carolinas. Three years after Carolina Gold Rusher opened with the park, a much bigger attraction would make its debut. The new ride named Thunder Road would be named after the 1958 crime drama film of the same name. Built by the Philadelphia Toboggan Company, this new dueling wooden coaster would be the first of its kind in the Carolinas, and would give Give passengers the thrill of racing each other on two separate tracks. On the ride's opening day, journalists from all over the country covered its premiere, and even NASCAR drivers Bobby Allison and David Pearson were in attendance. The ride was an instant hit and would prove to be a favorite among longtime park fans. However, as Carowinds sought to expand and update their attractions, this fan favorite ended up on the chopping block. After the opening of A-list coaster Fury 325 in 2015, the park wanted to further carry out their grand expansion plan. Part of this plan included a new water park expansion, but the vintage Thunder Road blocked any such expansion from taking place. So with no other choice, the park announced the ride's closure on August 27, 2015. Park officials gave the coaster a loving send-off, and it was clear that if it weren't for the logistical need for more water attractions, they wouldn't have torn down the old favorite. Nowadays, a second wave pool and a slide complex sit in Thunder Road's spot, but park fans aren't likely to forget the old classic anytime soon. Number 9. Eagle Fortress at South Korea's Everland Opened in 1992, closed in 2009. Built by American manufacturer Aerodynamics, this suspended coaster may not have seemed like much on paper. Despite its moderate stats though, the ride experience was said to be nothing short of incredible. What really made this ride a star was its setting. Throughout the layout, passengers zoomed through a lush forest on the side of a large hill. The ride fully used the natural terrain to its advantage, and was unanimously acclaimed by well-traveled enthusiasts. Passengers boarded colorful eagle-shaped ride vehicles and proceeded to literally swoop through the forest as the train swung freely side to side. Since the track was surrounded by trees, the ride felt much faster than it actually was. Amusement blog CoasterBot described the ride as, quote, If someone had taken Ninja at Six Flags Magic Mountain and married it to Boulder Dash at Lake Compounds. Indeed, this coaster setting was both inventive and breathtaking. Unfortunately, it would also allegedly help lead to the ride's downfall. Since the coaster was located on a tree-covered hillside, it was reportedly difficult for maintenance crews to work on the track. Moreover, after aerodynamics went out of business in the early 2000s, spare parts for the suspended coaster model became much more scarce. While tamer suspended coasters like Cedar Point's Iron Dragon are much easier to maintain, the more intense ones like Eagle Fortress put significantly more stress on the track, severely draining its service life. By 2008, it was clear that Eagle Fortress was far too difficult and expensive for the park to maintain. So in January 2009, Everland officially closed the coaster and would later demolish it in 2015. Its spot has since been reused for a plum blossom walkthrough garden. While only a relative few enthusiasts outside of Asia have gotten to experience this ride, those who have were immensely disappointed by its removal. Fortunately for thrill seekers, Everland would open a new world-class coaster just before the fortress closed. T-Express continues to operate as one of the best wooden coasters on Earth, so despite the removal of Eagle Fortress, Everland is still more than worth visiting. Number 8. Guazi at Florida's Busch Gardens Tampa Opened in 1999, closed in 2015. The battle of lion versus tiger is one that is widely debated to this day. In the late 90s though, Busch Gardens officially put this dream match together in the form of a massive dueling wooden coaster. At the time of its opening, it was the first wooden roller coaster to come to Florida since Boardwalk and Baseball's Florida Hurricane in 1978. Built by American manufacturer Great Coasters International, Guazi would feature two separate tracks, Lion and Tiger. Unlike a racing coaster, Guazi's tracks did not run side by side. Instead, they would largely stay apart throughout the ride. 
with the exception of a few moments in which both tracks would interact with each other. In its first few years, Guazi was widely praised for its airtime and its exciting dueling feature. As the years went on though, Guazi would end up suffering from a plethora of maintenance issues and plummeting guest satisfaction. As time went on, Guazi would get rougher and rougher, and the once thrilling ride experience would be marred by increasingly bumpy track. Park officials made several attempts to improve the coaster, such as replacing its original PTC trains with new Millennium Flyers in 2011. However, no upgrading seemed to do the trick. After years of dropping ridership and frequent breakdowns, the Tiger side would close in 2012 while the Lion side would close in 2015. Despite the coaster's rough reputation though, it still had its fans who lamented the closure. Speculation of a hybrid coaster makeover immediately followed its closure, but the cost of refurbishing the structure was reportedly beyond the park's resources at the time. However, after four years of sitting abandoned, the park would officially announce a major makeover in 2019. American American manufacturer Rocky Mountain Construction will completely retrack and redo the coaster for the 2020 season. The new layout will feature a 90 degree vertical drop and several inversions. And who knows, it may just give Cedar Point Steel Vengeance a run for its money. Number 7. Wild Mouse at England's Blackpool Pleasure Beach Opened in 1958, closed in 2017. Blackpool Pleasure Beach is without a doubt the most historic amusement park in the UK. Since the 1890s, this park has been home to several thrilling and significant roller coasters. One of the most notable of them was, believe it or not, a wild mouse. While these kinds of coasters are quite common at amusement parks, the one at Blackpool was among the most famous installations. In the 1950s, the park sought to bring a new major thrill ride to its lineup. So with the help of designer Frank Wright, the new coaster would be built in-house by the park's own building crew. This new ride would be a wooden wild mouse, and right from the start, it was known as quite an aggressive thrill ride. Compared to the tamer steel wild mouse coasters, this wooden variation would rumble its way through the track, whipping and plummeting guests through its layout. As the years went on, the coaster was known for being incredibly rough and brutal, and yet people still loved it for what it was. Viewer Explosive Gamer 105 says, The roughness, lateral forces, and lack of trim brakes make it feel dangerous and unpredictable, which makes the ride much more engaging and memorable. Viewer Scott Hillman says, This was the granddaddy of them, one of the best in the the world, and roughness in wild mice can be a good thing. And finally, user Riley Walker says, It was everything that a wild mouse should be. Packed full of laterals, near misses, and airtime moments. For decades, park goers would heap praise on the wild mouse, and the park would do its best to maintain the coaster. Even when wooden wild mouse coasters were shutting down left and right, this one stayed open. In 2017, the ride introduced a new magnetic brake system to erase the need for a manual brake system. However, this new brake system would prove to be a maintenance nightmare, and the ride would regularly close down due to technical issues. After a troubled 2017 season, the park did what many thought was unthinkable. Seemingly out of nowhere, it was revealed that the park had torn down the Wild Mouse during the off-season. Park fans were shocked and immensely let down by the removal. Park officials say the coaster was removed to make room for future developments. While it may be gone for good, it will be forever remembered for its lovingly relentless ride experience. Number 6. The Original Colossus at Six Flags Flags Magic Mountain. Opened in 1978, closed in 2014. Yet another twin wooden coaster on this list is Colossus. In 1977, Magic Mountain officials wanted something especially thrilling. A year after building the groundbreaking revolution, the park wanted something that they described as giving the quote-unquote rumble and sway of a classic wooden coaster. To achieve this goal, the park hired Ohio-based company International Amusement Devices to build their next major investment. At a whopping seven $7 million dollar price tag, it would be the tallest and fastest full circuit coaster on earth. Months after its design was finalized, the new ride named Colossus would open on June 28, 1978. The ride was an instant success for the park, and it would give SoCal thrill seekers a new and exciting racing coaster experience. This ride would attract much more than just local thrill seekers. It was also a Hollywood star. It was prominently featured in the hit movie National Lampoon's Vacation and would appear in famous TV shows like Knight Rider, Wonder Woman, and The A-Team. For decades, the ride would be a fan favorite, and its media appearances easily contributed to its popularity. However, by 2014, the trend of steel hybrid makeovers would make its way to California. Since 2011, American manufacturer Rocky Mountain Construction has 
taken old wooden coasters and given them new steel track and airtime packed layouts. Magic Mountain clearly wanted in on the RMC game. The park announced that Colossus would be close to be transformed into an all new hybrid coaster. Longtime park fans were furious at the decision, and several petitions to keep Colossus started to pop up. Nevertheless, Magic Mountain would go through with the makeover, and the result would be a resounding success. The ride now known as Twisted Colossus is often considered to be the best coaster in California, with its crazy ejector airtime, smooth inversions, and its well-integrated dueling feature. Many fans still miss the original Colossus, especially the ones that grew up with the coaster, but even those who miss the original often find it hard to deny that the new one is absolutely epic. Like what you see so far? Feel free to subscribe and hit the bell for new video notifications. Number 5. Disaster Transport at Ohio Cedar Point Open in 1985, closed in 2012 what happens when you cross Star Tours and an Intamin bobsled? You get this unique creation. In the mid-1980s, Swiss manufacturer Intamin saw great success with its Swiss Bob model. This roller coaster featured trains that freely traversed a bobsled-style track. No rails, just a large halfpipe. After installing three of these coasters in 1984, Intamin would install yet another one at Cedar Point. Meanwhile, former Cedar Point president Richard Kinzel was inspired by Disneyland to bring a heavily themed attraction to Cedar Point. Instead of building a new ride though, he would simply modify the existing Avalanche Run, putting it inside a large metal building. Millions of dollars later, Avalanche Run became Disaster Transport in 1990. This would be a sci-fi themed ride centered around an intergalactic transportation company named Dispatch Master Transport. The ride's name would be a play on words of this company. Guests would enter the ride building filled with special effects and animatronics, and be taken on a wild and crazy mission to transport intergalactic goods to a Alaska. Along the way, you would come across a spaceship, a few planets, and the surface of Mars. The coaster was initially well received for bringing a fun and well-themed ride experience to the Midwest. However, the ride was not without its faults. First of all, its appeal as an indoor coaster was limited. It did give guests a nice air-conditioned building to escape the sun, but it still couldn't run in the rain. This was because the roof was susceptible to leaks, meaning that water would pool inside the bobsled track and would have to be emptied out. Also, the effects inside the ride building were not regularly maintained over the years. Still though, the ride was wildly entertaining nonetheless, and it developed a cult following of its own. After Matt Wiemann took over as Cedar Fair CEO in 2012, he allegedly saw no need for such an outdated attraction with effects that had not been maintained. Plus, the building was arguably an eyesore on the picturesque shore. The same year he took over, the park would announce the ride's closure, and would hold a final riders event for charity. This event was heavily attended as park fans paid their final respects to the coaster. After last rides were given, disaster transport was swiftly demolished. The next year, it would be directly replaced by Gatekeeper, a B&M wing coaster. While Gatekeeper is often praised as an exciting, beautiful wing coaster, many still lament the demolition of a childhood classic. Number 4. Firehawk at Ohio's Kings Island Opened in 2001, closed in 2018. Shortly before B&M debuted their first flying coaster, Dutch manufacturer Vacoma would attempt the same concept with their own model. In the early 2000s, the company would debut their all-new Flying Dutchman coaster. This ride was vastly different from the B&M model, putting guests in a face-up position at dispatch instead of going straight into a flying position. The first of these coasters opened in 2000 at California's Great America. The next year, two more of these rides would open, this time in the Six Flags chain. One went to Maryland's Six Flags America as Batwing, and the other went to the recently acquired Six Flags Ohio, aka Geauga Lake. The latter coaster would open as X-Flight and was billed as the first flying coaster in the Midwest. Less than a decade after the ride opened though, Geauga Lake would suffer from severe financial problems and was acquired by Cedar Fair in 2004. Cedar Fair wished to bring Geauga Lake back to its roots as a small family park, so in an effort to downsize the attractions, X-Flight was moved to Kings Island after the 2006 season. There it would be renamed Firehawk and would reopen in 2007. The same year it opened at Kings Island though, its home park would shut down for good. Firehawk would end up outliving Geauga Lake by over a decade. On the other hand, its run at Kings Island proved to be troublesome, as it suffered constant maintenance issues. It was a rare model that was soon discontinued by Vacoma, and it wasn't easy to get spare parts for it. By 2018, Kings Island could no longer keep up with the ride's needs, and would announce its closure in September that year. Last rides were given on October 28th, and by the 2019 season, it was all gone. On the plus 
side, the coaster's former spot will soon be home to a brand new B&M Giga Coaster. Also, you can still technically ride Firehawk, as Batwing at Six Flags America has the same exact layout. So if you miss this coaster significantly, feel free to book a ticket to Maryland and ride Batwing while you can. So just be aware, it too has maintenance issues. Number 3. Big Bad Wolf at Virginia's Busch Gardens Williamsburg Opened in 1984, closed in 2009. Along with Eagle Fortress, this coaster is widely considered to be the greatest suspended roller coaster of all time. While originally intended to be designed by German manufacturer Schwarzkopf, the coaster would be handed off to American manufacturer Aerodynamics after Schwarzkopf went under. Coming off the recent failure of the Bat at Ohio's Kings Island, Aero sought to improve the reliability of their suspended coaster model. The upgrades to the model resulted in two of them being installed in 1984. These were XLR8 at Texas's Astroworld and Big Bad Wolf at Busch Gardens Williamsburg. This coaster centered around the classic folktale character of the Big Bad Wolf. Passengers would take on the role of the star canine and ascend an initial lift hill. Afterwards, the train would descend, sending riders zooming and swaying through a mock Bavarian village. The trains would represent the wolf sprinting through the village, terrorizing its residents. The near-miss effect with the buildings, as well as the hilly terrain the village sat on, led to an undeniably thrilling good time. The star element of this ride was the large drop towards the end. Here, riders would plummet down a steep slope straight into a turn of the Rhine River. This was the ride's most photogenic feature by far, and it was quite popular to take pictures of. The wolf would run strong for 25 years, but like Eagle Fortress, its intensity, location, and lack of spare parts made it increasingly hard to maintain. By 2009, the ride and its components had reached the end of their service life, and in order to keep it running, the park would have to replace millions of dollars worth in parts. They knew this ride was a fan favorite, but unfortunately, the repairs necessary were far beyond their resources. In July 2009, the park officially announced the coaster's closure to the public, and would give final rides in September. There's no doubt that this ride is the most sorely missed attraction in the park's history. Nowadays, the former spot of the wolf is taken up by Verbolten, a launch coaster by German manufacturer Zier. This ride features two launches, a vertical drop track, and a drop into a turn over the Rhine River just like the wolf had. Verbolten would even reuse Big Bad Wolf's footers over the river, directly mimicking the original layout. This serves as a fitting and deserving tribute to a fan favorite. Still though, it's needless to say that the memory of the wolf will live on forever. Number 2. Dragon Challenge at Florida's Islands of Adventure Opened in 1999, closed in 2017. This ride is considered by many to be the greatest dueling coaster of all time. Following the success of Universal Studios Florida, company executives wanted to take their competition with Disney to the next level. While Universal Studios would be themed to movies, their next park would be themed to literature. The new park would feature lands themed to Marvel Comics, the Dr. Seuss books, the Jurassic Park novels, and a general fantasy adventure based land named the Lost Continent. This new land would feature an amalgamation of attractions themed to various fables. These included a Sinbad stunt show, a Poseidon walkthrough attraction, and the star attraction named Dueling Dragons. This ride featured two separate B&M inverted coasters, a red one named Fire and a blue one named Ice. Both tracks would constantly interact and cross over with each other, making for a ride that was both unique and inventive. It was truly a masterpiece of engineering. By far the most awesome moment of the coaster was the dueling vertical loop section. The trains would pass through these loops simultaneously, giving riders the illusion that they would crash head-on. It was an insane near-miss element, particularly in the front row. The ride would prove to be an A-list attraction for the park. Even when the eventual Harry Potter section took over much of the Lost Continent, Dueling Dragons was simply renamed and rethemed to Dragon Challenge. Specifically, it would be rethemed to the Triwizard Tournament's Dragon Task from the fourth Harry Potter book, with the blue side representing the Hungarian Horntail and the red side representing the Chinese Fireball. It seemed like the attraction would continue to serve as an A-list thrill ride. Unfortunately, a 2011 incident metaphorically derailed its run. In 2011, a 52-year-old tourist lost his eyeball after being hit in the face with an unidentified object during the ride. It allegedly happened during the loop section, when a shoe from a passenger on the other train flew off. This incident, in addition to common complaints of being hit with loose articles 
from the other train led the park to disable its dueling feature. This killed the most defining feature of the ride, and its popularity would severely dwindle over the years. In 2017, speculation of a new attraction replacing the dragons ran wild, and later that year, the park would announce its closure. Though the removal of its dueling feature hurt its popularity, park fans who grew up with this attraction on family trips to Orlando were absolutely devastated at its closure. Last rides would be given in September, and by the end of the year, demolition had swiftly begun. When a supposedly less intense coaster was announced as its replacement, many were skeptical that it could hold a candle to the dragons. Soon enough, the new coaster known as Hagrid's Motorbike Adventure would open in June 2019. The new ride would be themed to Rubius Hagrid's Care of Magical Creatures class and would take passengers into the Forbidden Forest. It was praised for being one of the most elaborately themed roller coasters of all time. As such, it would prove to be a massive success for the park, with waits of up to 10 hours reported on opening day. Still though, many enthusiasts agree that while the new coaster is a beautiful and well-themed creation, the dragons will still be sorely missed. Just a quick note before the number one spot, if you want to help further support this channel, you can check out my merchandise shop below the video or in the link in the description. Number one, Volcano the Blast Coaster at Virginia's King's Dominion. Opened in 1998, closed in 2018. Since the early years of King's Dominion, the park featured an enormous man-made mountainous structure. The structure would be home to several attractions over the years, such as the Haunted River and perhaps more famously, Smurf Mountain. This was a dark ride themed to the 80s cartoon series, The Smurfs. But by the 90s, the Smurfs' popularity had declined considerably. Moreover, the amusement industry was in the midst of a roller coaster boom. Simply put, the people wanted thrill rides, and King's Dominion had an ambitious plan to turn Smurf Mountain into one. In 1997, the park announced plans to build a new launched roller coaster inside the mountain, turning it into a volcano that literally shoots guests out of the top. There would even be special smoke and fire effects to more properly simulate an active volcano. Swiss manufacturer Intamin was hired to build an all-new prototype inverted launch coaster. The ride's layout went as followed. After a turn out of the station, guests would enter the first launch, which would send them through a wide bank turn. As they approached the entrance to the volcano, they would enter the second launch, which would send the train upwards through an opening in the former mountain. Guests were sent straight into a rollout inversion, which made for a truly terrifying ride moment. After being shot out like lava, the train would maneuver down and around the mountain, going through three heartline rolls along the way. Shortly afterwards, the train would re-enter the volcano, hitting the final brake run and re-entering the station. The coaster instantly became a guest favorite, as well as the park's star attraction. The size and scope of the ride, in addition to the fact that riders could experience what it's truly like to be erupted out of a volcano, contributed to its success. It was the closest you can get to an active volcano in Virginia. Sadly, since this was a prototype, it was susceptible to plenty of issues over its lifetime. The ride would suffer from constant downtime and guests were regularly disappointed. Most of the issues allegedly involved the mechanics of the second launch, and the trains would roll back quite often. The launch track inside the volcano was difficult to work on since its location was pretty hard to reach. Doing maintenance inside the volcano would be an extremely involved process, and would prove to be quite a challenge. Despite how difficult it was to maintain though, King's Dominion did everything they could to keep it running. But considering the ride's prototype status and lack of spare parts, it was running on borrowed time. In 2018, the coaster would close for the rest of the season. Park officials reportedly planned on ordering a replacement part for the coaster, but upon further inspection, it was decided that the whole thing had passed the end of its service life. If they wanted to keep it running, they would allegedly have to spend an exorbitant amount of money and pretty much redo the whole ride from scratch. Not to mention the fact that it was partially inside a decades-old structure that wasn't even meant to house a roller coaster. Repairing it was clearly out of the question. So in February 2019, the park announced that the ride would never reopen, and demolition would soon begin. By summer, everything, including the original mountain, was demolished. Everywhere you turned online, people lamented the loss of this coaster severely. It is unknown what will be built in its place, but considering the atlas-sized level of disappointment felt by enthusiasts, it's going to be one tough ride to top. Thanks for watching everyone. Feel free to like, share, and subscribe. You can follow me on social media on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, or you can check out my website at themeparkcrazy.com. This is Theme Park Crazy, and I'll see you all next time.